All right, so there is something new that we're doing here. Um, one of the things I saw with the corporate citizen playbook was people getting their holding company stuff set up. So this is some that we're going to do. That's a link below where we will set up your holding company. We will set up your operating company. We will help you with your banking and some other things. So go ahead, check that link out below if you need help. And also we're going to continue the sale. Um, probably gonna let the sale roll until probably the end of the month. So we've got a lot of stuff that's coming in. A lot of people are asking questions. So the sale continues to the end of the month where you can go ahead and get in and get these good juicy deals. So that's all I got for that. So let's roll off into this video. All right, so the American dream is not dead. However, the American dream is more expensive. I was doing some research, you know, since I put up my uh, passport bro video and I went ahead and I did some full analysis. Do you know that 9 million people a year leave the United States to move somewhere else? 9 million people a year. They're leaving to move to Thailand, London, Paris, Portugal. They're leaving. But this is some that you didn't know. Guess how many people are trying to come to America every year? Take a wild guess. Put that in the comments because we have 3 million people per month trying to get into the United States. So if you take those 9 million and subtract it from the 36 million, that leaves us 27 million to the positive. And I, I got a question. Why are all these folks trying to get here? This is America. The American the dream is so expensive. The price of cheese, the price of dog food, all this stuff is so expensive. Why are all these folks literally risking life and limb to get here? One of the things, and I was watching this video of this guy explaining why he went overseas to find uh, a wife and he found a wife and she was in the video and they were just talking about the differences and stuff. And I was watching these videos and stuff and <sighs> dude seems happy. Dude seems happy. However, I'm about to say something that's going to piss off a lot of people. Uh, this whole thing, because he was walking to show his friend's house and he was walking through what looked like the jungle and he crossed this little hand built bridge because there was a storm that came out that took out the bridge. And honestly, I seriously doubt that this dude would live like that here in the United States. I seriously doubt that. And yes, it's cheaper. Yes, it's cheaper, but there, there's a cost. And, you know, personally, I would not live in a situation like that. Just wouldn't. And then this house where his friend spent 50000 building this house, and it, it wasn't, in my opinion, that good. It wasn't that opinion. And this got me to thinking. So we got all these people trying to come to the United States where the American dream is supposedly dead. We have 9 million people leaving and it kind of hit me. You know, a lot of these people who are trying to get here to America are coming from positions like that. Like uh, one of someone from the Philippines put in there that it was a prime directive for Filipinos to leave the Philippines to come to the United States, become a nurse so they can have more money. So the people who live in these cheaper lower cost economies are breaking their necks to get here in America because here's the thing. If you don't know what it's like to struggle, to be poor, to be living, you know, th this is a big thing on YouTube. Little African kids doing dance videos and, them, you know, and they're dancing. They're not dancing on concrete or paved streets. They're dancing on dirt. And, you know, people love their smiles and their energy and their enthusiasm. But these kids are living in 
very bad circumstances. I remember meeting this girl. She was an attorney. She had immigrated from Cameroon and she moved to London and she went to law school and all this stuff. And she was here working on some stuff. And we we're having a conversation. This girl told me she did not have her first pair of shoes until she was seven. She didn't have her first pair of shoes until she was seven. And I think we as Americans just take so much for granted. We just take so much for granted. And these people in these other countries who just don't have, I mean, they just simply don't have, they will break their necks to move here. They will do all the things that they, they will go crazy to get here because they know what it's like to be poor, to be without, to struggle to have drinking water. They, they know what the struggle is. And we have a bunch of people who grew up with running water, grew up inside, whether you were poor, middle class or rich, you grew up inside. And these people want to go to these foreign lands because it's kind of cozy to be in the foreign land, to hear a foreign language. But the reality, I'll share some with you guys. When I moved to Hawaii, the first two years were fantastic. They were fantastic. I was in Hawaii, go to Waikiki, do all this other stuff. Last year was hell because after I got there and I got to live and experience certain things and I started to, I don't know, I can't say resent. It wasn't resentment. But I got to the point where I wanted to go back to the rest of the United States. And that's how I ended up at Fort McPherson in Atlanta, Georgia, because Hawaii was good. It was great. The beach. I mean, I got to see so many things like I remember one time we were on the North Shore and we could see the whales swimming. You know, it was great. It was great for two years. But after two years and this is something else, I think. And I've been watching a lot of videos across of people who live in foreign countries. A lot of people come back. They may go to Thailand. They may go to the Philippines. But a lot of these people come back because we are institutionalized in the American lifestyle. And for you to go somewhere else and to have a lifestyle that isn't comparable I don't think everyone can do that. I don't think everyone can do that. And also, let's talk about the American dream. The American dream is not dead. It's just more expensive. I was listening to a guy here, read a report that um, 99% of America cannot afford a house. If the, the couple has a average income, average couple income was like seventy one thousand dollars. And these people could not afford the average house in America. These people couldn't afford it. And, you know, remember when I was talking about Boston, Massachusetts and what people had to do to afford a house in Massachusetts? Uh, years and years ago, I used to work for a company called, by the name of Renecrate that was um, headquartered in Massachusetts, Waltham, Massachusetts. And I remember these stories. This man was talking about what he and his he and his wife lived with her parents for three years so they could save up enough money to buy their own house. And this guy was talking about that people were going to have to do things like that. And he used the term extraordinarily challenging and difficult. And I, I kind of laughed because I, I didn't really think that was extraordinarily difficult or challenging. It was just what people have done. And th this was just more proof positive that people will adapt, that people will do what they need to do to get into this American lifestyle. Because once again, this is something that I, I consistently talked about. The American dream is not dead. It's not dead at all. It's just way, way more expensive. It's just very, very expensive for you to live a qualified, I'm going to say live a good lifestyle in the United States of America. 
it's way more expensive than it used to be. And I think you have a choice. You have a choice. You can be like the nine million who are leaving America. I've seen some things that just, they kind of boggle my mind. Like being in America depresses me. I need to go to another country. And I'm going to say something. Yes, living in America is expensive. There is no disagreement on that. However, I'm going to say that some of the comments that I've seen about leaving America are rooted in weakness, fear, and the lack of wanting to work. Because, yes, you can go to Thailand, you can go to the Philippines, you can go to Vietnam or Cambodia, and the cost of living is cheaper. But I never see anyone going to Korea, where Korea, I think Korea is somewhat expensive. And I surely don't see a lot of people going to Japan, where I know it's expensive. And this whole running from the cost of living well I think a lot of people are going to make that decision and they're going to move to another country and I think some of these people who are going to leave here are going to move to another country and they're really going to enjoy it and they're going to stay in that country I also think that a lot of people will move to these other countries and they're going to come back because it's not America because I was watching this one video where this guy was talking about he went back to California and I will say, I'll say this, a lot of these people in these lower cost of living economies are very community oriented because they need each other. They always, this is, this is something I've noticed, that poor people, life in the hood, these people are usually really close because there's, there's this need of help, there's this need of your neighbor. But once you get money, once you live a certain life, you don't you don't see that kind of community because you have enough money to live life the way you want to. So I will say that the sense of community in these lower scale of economy countries is tighter because it has to be. It has to be. They have to be friendly. They have to share. They have to work together. Uh, the same guy who married this uh, Filipino her birthday was coming up and what she wanted him to do was take a lot of money to buy food so they can give it to the people who don't have food. And they, he, he thought that was such um, a regal conduct. It was just and I was like, no, that's just her upbringing. That's just part of her culture. That's just part of her upbringing. And many people in her culture would do the same thing. So it's a lifestyle thing because where, you know, we we're living well, we're doing well. What we're going to do is help out the people who are not doing well. That that's more of a lifestyle and a culture thing than a personal manifestation. And, you know, they were just talking about this. And, you know, once again, I can understand why a man will want to leave America and get him a pretty young thing, get him something small, cute, and attractive. I can see that. I can see that all day long. However, what what really gets it for me is the living in these, I'm going to say it, impoverished circumstances. That right there is the thing that just takes it away because, you know, um, I'm not going to live in the village. I'm not going to live in the jungle. I'm just not going to do that. And one of the things that I see happening, one of the things that I see really, really starting to manifest itself is the fantasy is so rich. The way that, because once again, I've watched a lot of videos and you will see a lot of YouTubers putting out this fantasy that it's so great to be living in this other country. It's so great. And then when I started to watch the other YouTubers who were like, and one guy was just like, look, 
if your money ain't together, he said, stay in America. Do not come to the Philippines. Don't do it. And he explained to uh, that what happened to people who come there and their money isn't together. And then they have to go to the embassy and the embassy has to bus them back home. You don't see this for oh, like it's so great and you can live here and it's just cheap and it's just so great and it's so wonderful. Now, I will say that a lot of these people are young and single, young and single. And once again, years ago, when I moved to Hawaii, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was like, I was in Hawaii. I was hanging in Waikiki. I was doing all this stuff. You couldn't tell me nothing. And then two years later, I was ready to leave because it wasn't what I grew up to grew up with. It wasn't what I was used to. And this this whole notion. And let's talk about the money. All right. <sighs> the cost of living is cheap. You know why the cost of living is cheap in these countries? Because these countries don't produce anything. They don't produce, they don't expect, they don't, they don't export, and their GDP is so low. And this is why the country is poor, this is why they have these issues, and this is why the cost of living is so cheap. And also, I'm going to say something. If you want to live in the jungle, or you want to live in impoverished circumstances, because uh, someone who lives in one of those countries, he, he put in something that was key in the comments. He was like, if you want to live somewhat of an American lifestyle, you're looking at 1500 to 2500 per month because they know. They know that a lot of American men are coming over there. They know that a lot of American men, men are participating in coming over there. So they're raising the prices. He says there is no way that a local would be spending that kind of money to live in their own country. So even though it's less expensive than living here in the United States, it's still way more expensive than what the locals are paying because the locals aren't going to pay that. So the money. Once again, you could be part of the nine million people who are leaving America every year. And I'm going to say it, the majority of them are white. Um, or you could be part of the 27 million who are coming to America because of the opportunities. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's a personal choice. And this is something else that I'm seeing. And this kind of goes back to a bringing. There's a lot of videos on YouTube of people talking about how lonely they are. And there was this guy. Actually, I screenshotted it because uh, he actually talked about it. This guy, is anyone here just willing to talk? I'm not picky on the subject. I'm just in a bad situation in my life, and I'm incredibly lonely and just looking for conversation. Admittedly, I'm not well-versed in sports, but I'm still willing to discuss anything. That guy, he put that up on next door. So I think that a lot of people are lonely. A lot of people are struggling with not only money, but having a life, having companionship, having certain things situated. I think that a lot of people are really, really struggling to live in the United States, not just on the social economic level, but on the interpersonal level. And this is another reason that I think a lot of people are leaving because you go to another country by yourself. You know, you can explore, you can build stuff. And I will say, you know, from my trip in London, uh, Germany and Paris, these cities are designed to be very communal where there's a lot of walking. So you can like live in this building, come downstairs and go here and go to your grocery store, go here and go to a restaurant. They're built that way. And the United States of America isn't built that way. You want to know why? The car. America, you know, the United States of America used to be built that way. It used to be built that way, but it's not built that way because of the car. Because, you know, the American, the United States is built for driving. The United States is built for traveling. And this is why you have the suburbs way over here where they're cheaper. And then you have the city life. 
you know, there, there, there's a big, big difference. There's a huge difference with the things that are going on. But one of the things, and this is one of the things that I've talked about so often over the years here, start a business so you can improve your economic situation. Start a business. And you start a business and you're living where you want to live. You're living how you want to live. You're enjoying life. You're taking vacations. You're taking trips. Maybe you won't want to leave America. Maybe you're not trying to get out of America. Maybe you're not trying to run from America because you're living well. Because, you know, I toyed around with moving to London because I thought it was going to be so exciting until I actually went to London. And then uh, toyed around with moving to Manhattan Beach. And then I looked at that. And that was more attractive based upon what was in my head versus the reality of living there. And this is one of the things. So you could be like those nine million people getting out of here, running out of here, Tom. And this is one of the things I don't see families leaving America. What I see are a bunch of individuals, a bunch of lonely people, a bunch of people who are struggling to, to live in the United States because they don't have social skills. Going back to that, when I grew up, we would go visit people as a family. I don't think people are doing that anymore. And these people are single because, once again, I don't see families leaving the United States of America. I see a bunch of single people leaving the United States of America. That's what I see all day long all right so let's wrap this up the sale continues on we got a lot of stuff that's going to go on this month and we have a done for you program now and we have a lot of other things that are going on but yeah if you want to stay in america and you want to live well you need to start a business so you can increase your income so you can live where you want to live and enjoy life on a finer level. That's what you want to do, because like I looked at the numbers. Yes, there are people leaving America, but there are way more people trying to get here. There are way more people trying to come to America. They're trying to get here. They're risking life, limb and anything else to get here to these United States of America. And that's something that should be noted. So we have way more people trying to get here than we have people who are trying to leave. I think that's something you should think about and you should consider if your plans are to leave the United States of America to go live in a foreign low economy. Which I just couldn't do simply. I couldn't do it. Just no, it ain't happening.